You're listening to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio, broadcasting out of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Today's voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. When Christians Speak is dedicated to lifting up the name of Christ Jesus and spreading the good news. So it's my brother, can you spare a dime? My God shall supply my need. Don't have to beg because I am a seed. Because every good and perfect gift comes from the Father who I All right, good evening. Can anyone out there hear me? Well, we're going to open up in prayer. Most gracious and merciful Father, we thank you on this evening for this show. We thank you for the men that have assembled here to hear your word and to speak your word, Father. We thank you, Father, that even the technology that we're using on this evening will come under subjection of your name, Lord Jesus, that it would function just as it's been designed to function so that your word can get out, Father. Now, Satan, we remind you of your permanent appointed place beneath our feet where you have no dominion, no power now, nor any authority. And we thank you, Father, for the words that will go forth on this evening. We thank you for the lives that will be transformed. We thank you for the founder and leader of this show, Brother Ray Rose. And we thank you for each and, other, each and every man that has given of his time to be here to share your word, Father. And we thank you, Father, that everything that they will put out, Father, that we return unto them 100-fold. And it's in the name that's above every name, the name, Lord Jesus the Christ, in whom we love and whom we serve. Thank God. Amen. Well, can anyone hear me out there? Well, if you can, my name is Cleophas. Um, I'm waiting to get linked up with Brother Ray. 
Brother Antonio and Brother Elston. Hopefully this thing will come together and work out so that we can all communicate. We have a uh, awesome topic to discuss on this evening. Um, and I'll give it just a few more minutes to uh, see if we get linked up with everyone else. But yes, we have an awesome topic that we're going to be discussing this evening. Um, something that the Spirit of the God, Spirit of the Living God, laid on my heart um, relative to uh, to issues uh, in the land and uh, specifically with men. Uh, but it, it's a, it's an issue that uh, that seems to be attacking uh, everyone, you know, young, old. Uh, <clears throat> Even in the body of Christ, you know, uh, pastors, um, and it's the spirit of suicide. So we want to talk about that this evening. Um, our foundational scripture um, for this evening is uh, will be found in First Peter chapter five, uh, verses six through ten. And again, we we just want to open it up for discussion and prayerfully what we talk about this evening will will hit home for someone and, you know, more importantly, that, that someone's life will be transformed. Amen. 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 Can you, hey, uh, um, Cleo, can you hear me? Uh, yes, you're, 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 you're a little muffled, but I, I can hear you. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're having some tough technical difficulties, but it's okay, you know. Uh, I guess this is one of those subjects, man, that uh, the enemy gets mad at and stuff like that. But uh, we're going to move forward in it, and um, I'm going to um, – I can still talk to you, but I'm going to restart my um, uh, my laptop and because um, ca- I'm calling on my cell phone. Amen. So um, just bear with us. Amen. But um, um, and my brother, this is a uh, – uh, a very good um, topic, man. I'm, uh, and it's, 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 there's so much that is going on, man. It's just uh, something that is needed in today. You know what I mean? It's something we need to talk about these things that the men are facing. Amen. So we're gonna do that and stuff. So okay. Hey. So where you want to start off at? Hey, brother Ray, you want you want to try reconnecting? Cause uh, I, I'm sure I'm having a difficult time hearing you. And I'm sure that. Uh, Anyone else that's listening is probably having a difficult time understanding what you're saying. I made out some okay. of it. <clears throat> okay. Well, Has anyone else joined us, uh, Elston or, or Antonio or, or Pastor Tyrone? Um, not as of yet. Um, I know Elston told me he's going to run late. Okay. And everything. Okay. And um, um, Tyrone, Pastor Tyrone should join us in a minute. So just, just <laughs> I'm sorry, man, I'm putting you on the side, but just talk a little bit. Let me see if I can work this out um, before the broadcast in, okay? Well, we declare and decree that your voice will come through clear, that the airways will hear you loud and clear, um, and we 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 know it to be so. This okay. too shall pass. Amen. Yeah, they, I, I'm looking at the um, the studio. They have no problem. Uh, with, not with us. I'm thinking it's me, but it's actually Blog Talk Radio and stuff. So we're going to... Well, why don't I do this? Why don't I, I read our um, our scripture, um, and I'll be reading from the Amplified Version. And again, that scripture reference is 1 Peter uh, chapter 5, uh, verses 6 through 10. Um, and again, I'm reading from the Amplified Version. Um, and if you have your Bibles, uh, please follow along. And the scripture mm-hmm. reads as thus, Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, Set aside self-righteous pride so that he may exalt you to a place of honor in his service at the appropriate time. Casting all your cares, all your anxieties, all your worries, and all of your concerns once and for all on him. For he cares about you with deepest affection and watches over you very carefully. Be sober, well-balanced, and self-disciplined. Be alert and cautious at all times that the enemy of yours, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, 
fiercely hungry, seeking someone to devour. But resist him. Be firm in your faith against his attack, rooted, established, immovable, knowing that the same experiences of suffering are being experienced by your brothers and sisters throughout the world. You do not suffer alone. After you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who imparts his blessing and favor, who called you to his own eternal glory in Christ, will himself complete, confirm, strengthen, and establish you, making you what you ought to be. Glory to God. <laughs> um, man, that scripture speaks to me, and, 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 and I know that uh, that you know, there's a, a lot of people hurting. Um, you know, uh, the pressures of life can come. Uh, you know, and, and, and I've been... I've learned, I've been taught, and, and I understand that, you know, pressure uh, can burst pipes. And and men in particular, uh, what I've found and, and even what I know with my own personal self, I can certainly speak about me for certain, is we tend to hold things in and we really don't have that release valve or that release point. Um, <clears throat> someone that we can talk to or someone that we can share with and a lot of a lot of times it comes up from a position of pride. You know, we've established ourselves and we've established this persona of who we are on the outside by putting on certain masks or certain dispositions where people think that you're one way, but internally you're going through hell because you got these pressures coming against you. And it's important as 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 men, it's important as people to have that release point or to have that someone in our lives that we can talk to that, that, that we know uh, <clears throat> is not judgmental of us or, more importantly, that love us for who we are and know things about us that others may not know. Uh, my pastor says it like this. He says, uh, in, the, in, in the church, uh, Sundays have become the equivalent, equivalent of a masquerade ball or, or Halloween because people come through the doors every every Sunday or every weekend and they put these masks on and these masks are, are portraying something that they really aren't. And internally they could be going through all sorts of turmoil and hell uh, within their lives, but they're trying to, well, we are trying to impress people in some cases that we don't even like. <laughs> And so it can build up these pressures on you that now you have to perform or act out something or be something that you really aren't. And the fear, again, Satan brings fear along. Fear is is the is the directly opposed to faith. You can't be in faith and fear at the same time, just like light and darkness can't dwell in the same place. So it's important for us as believers, it's important for us as as people. Um, that we have that uh, release point or someone that we can share with or someone that we can hear from um, that can speak to us that will um, allow us to to be who we are and who God called us to be, but more importantly, that will allow us to share what's on our heart and not have any type of disposition toward us or any kind of uh, judgmental position against us. Um, where we can feel free to do so. Um, the Bible says this. It says, whom the sun sets free is free indeed. And, uh, you know, when you're when you're free in your thinking and you're free in your living, um, those pressures, although they will come, because that's what Jesus said in John 16 and 33. He said, man, he said, be, <laughs> in this world, you're going to have some troubles. You're going to have some trials. You're going to have some tribulations. But 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 to be of good cheer, the good news is he has already overcome the world. And 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 if we're in Christ and we're and God created us in his image and in his likeness, and the Bible says if 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 as he is, so are we in this world. So we can take on that disposition and consequently in first Peter five it says to cast out cares. To give what we have over to God and let 
let God have whatever that problem is. Um, <laughs> the late Bishop G.E. Patterson said it like this. He had a sermon that he said, I gave that problem to God. <laughs> yeah, it's just like that mail that comes that you don't want. You know, don't run from it. You know, give it over to God and uh, let God fight your battles for you. Amen. 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 Uh, Reverend um, Elton, did you join us? Yes. Oh, good. Praise God. I, uh, Who else do I have to... with me? <laughs> do I have <laughs> reinforcement? <laughs> no, left me out here by myself. <laughs> nope, we're here. <laughs> okay, all right. Hey, man. Uh, thank, you there, my, my, thank you there, my brothers. Um, I'm still having some um, issues over here um, in the studio. And stuff like that. So just uh, uh, continue to talk. For those that are listening, this is our three real life, real real men, real talk. Amen. We're talking about encouragement and the spirit of of, uh, of from depression and suicide. Uh, basically, what's going on uh, when I talked to Cleo for earlier? You guys can hear me okay, right? Am I still muffled? Yeah, you got some. You got some type of echo going on. Yeah. Yeah, let me just not talk. <laughs> you got to go ahead until I get squared away over here, okay? But um, I'm just, Hey, yeah. gentlemen, I'm going to disconnect, and I'm going to call back in, and hopefully I can hear a little better. Uh, but I'm going to call right back in. Okay. Um, okay. Oh, buddy. Yeah. But, um, um, but anyway, I think the enemy doesn't want us to get this word out, man. Uh, uh, but but they often I think what it is is that there, there are so many people that are um, going through um, depression. So many men that are facing what, as uh, my brother was saying earlier, is that we put on masks, you know, mm-hmm. and everything. So we have a responsibility, man, to 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 deal with this and everything, and to and and, and to trust God. So uh, um. I believe that this is a very important topic, you know. Uh when we when this was first set up, I wanted us to talk about things like that that will make a difference in people's life. How can someone um uh get through the um a depression or get through uh suicide? You got preachers now that are committing suicide, man. You know? Right. Um more so than ever before. So it's important uh, that we begin to talk about the things and pull those things that, that we try to hide away. And begin to address those things. Amen. 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 Uh, Amen. Brother, Amen. Please, I think you... we are on. Be quiet a minute. Uh, Hello? Okay, uh, brother Tyrone is with us. Oh, God bless you, brother. God bless you, sir. Can y'all hear me okay? Yes. I can hear you good. Oh, good. Okay. Mm. God bless. Uh, I, I, I'm here. I apologize. We have some phone troubles, and I'm on the highway. Here. But it's, it's good to hear to be on tonight. Amen. Amen. So, uh, again, you're listening to Christmas Speed Talk Radio. This is our three real life, real men, real talk. I'm talking. I have with me today, online with me right now, I'm, I'm Brother Cleophis, Brother Tyrone, Amen, and I'm Brother Elson. I'm, I'm Brother Ray. Uh, Brother Antonio, I haven't heard that sure he'll be with us today. Probably maybe. And stuff, but listen, as and we're talking about this thing, man, because it's important to all of us, you know. At some point, and I know I speak for myself, I've suffered through depression and everything, and um, especially after the stroke, man, and didn't and didn't have a desire to live and wanted to give up and everything. But one of the things that helped me, um, um brothers, is that having people around me that was very strong, uh, not just family, but church members, and um, being connected. You know, with people that was that were supportive and, and and kept speaking the word, you know, and keep speaking the word and stuff and everything. And also, uh, I'm going to admit this on air, and I don't care who listens to it because I'm going to be transparent. And I only can speak for myself. Also, getting whatever counseling that was needed to get me through that period of time and everything. Um, one of the things I noticed that all of us, not all of us, but most people go through what they call uh, situational or uh, uh, depression, okay, and that's because uh, uh, because of moments of things happen because of loss or, or circumstances and stuff like that. You know, th- those things are real, okay. And 
Uh, what we got to <laughs> understand is we got to recognize what's going on with that and 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 get help and address those in in a holistic manner, you know, in a holistic manner and stuff. So again, I'm gonna give it back over to uh, Brother Cleopas so he can inspire more to get the other brothers to talk a little bit about it. I'm still trying to reload everything on my computer, so I'm still on my cell phone. So y'all just bear with me, okay? Amen. Well, thank uh, thank God we can hear you. I can hear you, and and uh, that's uh, that's powerful because you know, as men and and as 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 people, period, men, women, um, you know, depression is real. Um, stress is real, um, and sometimes you can go through these things and you can go through these challenges, and you you can't you don't even know that that you're depressed or you don't even know that you're being challenged in that area. Um, there's a saying that says that you can't see the forest for the trees, and you're you're knee deep or or inundated with everything that's going on around you or going on in your life. And you have no idea that you're heading down a road that, that could lead to total destruction. <clears throat> I am a firm believer that that everything starts with a thought. Um, there's nothing that is that we can see physically that didn't start with someone's thought first. Um, when you talk about the prodigal son, he didn't just leave his father's house. one. He didn't wake up one morning and say, hey, I'm leaving my father's house. There were some thought patterns that had happened or that had come about over a period of time, that one day the decision was made that, hey, you know, today's the day I'm leaving my father's house. And 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 just as Brother Ray said, you know, I, I too have suffered with depression. Um, I too have struggled um, in my personal life. Uh, and sometimes our struggles come from the words that we say out of our mouths, um, you know, things that we have declared that that we won't want that we don't want to go through or, or things trials that we don't want to have in our lives, <clears throat> and that's kind of what happened with Job. Um, mm-hmm. Everything Amen. came out Job because of what he said, and Job said, I think it's in three twenty five. He said that the thing that I feared the most has come upon me. Amen. So yeah. To be careful about what we're saying and what we're speaking out and, and our thoughts. And the Bible even talks about casting down every imagination, every thought that exalts itself in the word of God. So I want to hear from my, 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 my co-hosts, my brothers, uh, whom I love dearly, and some I haven't even met personally. <laughs> but through this association and through this time of uh, fellowship on Tuesdays, um, I have come to really enjoy hearing from and listening to, and I have grown and have and have gotten better as a person through and by our association. So uh, somebody jump in and 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 and, and look at First uh, Peter chapter five, our foundational scripture, and, and just uh, expound on it. Wow. wow. First Peter. Chapter yeah. Five. Yeah, First Peter chapter five. Uh, our scriptures are verse six through uh, ten. Uh, and if I need to read it again, I will. Um, but I, I think we have a, a good eye. Verse seven talks about casting all our cares upon Him, for we know that He cares for us. So, well, just uh, hearing that, I haven't pulled it up yet, but just hearing that uh, here, um, casting all our cares. Upon him, for he cares for us. That's uh, and uh, you know, with me uh, hearing that scripture, and knowing that scripture, and, and, and quoting it so many times in ministry, uh, I found it to be that uh, your cares is, is is a lot that you that you you have to carry on yourself. But when you can take the opportunity and actually do what the word says and cast your cares on the Lord and, and knowing that He cares for you, it, it's, it's a great release in you uh, as far as doing what the Lord say do uh, and doing that. I had to I had to literally do that for God to release in me uh, uh, a, a sort of a, a, a relief. Of the carrying, the, the cares that I'm carrying, uh, Lord Jesus. I'm sorry, I just saw an accident. Uh, the cares that we're carrying about us 
such as things that my family is going through with my daughter. Uh, but by doing that, God, God, by me casting my cares on to the Lord, it gave us a relief of worrying and caring to the point to where it was putting us in a, you know, we were in a state of, of depressed because it seemed like our cares were so strong or what nothing being done, although we were praying, but we had to cast, cast those things to the Lord. And it brought a relief in us uh, to where we could begin to, to feel and see uh, God feels blessed, is blessed uh, by doing it. So I found that that particular passage of Scripture to be a, a great help for me. And I say to anybody and everybody that we need to literally uh, just do what the Bible says. Let's, let's cast, I had to cast my cares to the Lord. And, you know, because... I, I think I can love so much or feel so much for for a situation and to the way it was just you know I'm, I'm loving I'm loving you Lord I'm loving you Lord I'm 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 doing this but there's nothing happening but God said just cast them to me just give them to me just cast all of your cares to me and let me fix it for you let me do it and when I did that it brought a relief and then. Not only did it bring relief, but it brought back my faith to where I I could believe strong for what God is going to do and what He has begun to do. And since then, the Lord has uh, has blessed us, uh, blessed my daughter tremendously. Uh, my little testimony to her, uh, for her, is that she's coming home tomorrow, and we Amen. thank God for that. You know, God. She's coming home tomorrow after after the long time she's been in the hospital. But we had to, you know, we had to cast our cares to the Lord, and it was just, a, it was just a burden, a, a, a heavy thing, uh, caring, loving her. But we had to give it to the Lord, and from doing that, He released in us. And now I'm just excited about what He's done uh, by us doing that. Uh, on that particular passage of Scripture, that's what I, 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 I feel, and uh, you know what the Lord has done for us through that scripture. Just by Praise just God. casting our cares upon him. Praise God. Praise God. You know, I, I, I was listening to your, uh, to your testimony there about, about your daughter and, and, and just listening to what you were saying. And, and, uh, and I could, I could hear and see uh, David uh, when him and his men uh, returned back to their camp from, and, and Ziglag. And found that their homes had been burned and their families had been taken, and yeah, they went yeah. to this deep despair. And, you know, they they the Bible says they cried and they wept until they yeah. they had no more in them to cry and weep. And the Bible says that David encouraged himself in the Lord. And what that means is that he stopped looking inward at his situation and he turned outward to God and said, "Okay, Lord, this is yours." What should I do? Uh, where am I? Do I go after these folks, or do after I go after this troop, or do I just take what has happened and move on? And, and yeah. God spoke back to him, and he said, you go. And you not go. only are you going to recover and, and overtake them, but you're going to recover all plus. You know, so, right. yes, I mean, you gotta re- you got to remain strong. And, and, and I guess my question to, to, to the panel is, you know, how do you stay strong in the midst of a great adversity? Mm. What steps can you take to stay, you know, to, you know, what can we do as, as, as men of God, as, as maybe someone's listening that, that, that hasn't developed that faith walk with Christ yet uh, the way you and I have, what can we do to establish ourselves where in the face of, Sometimes the greatest challenge, and, and most of the times, the yeah. biggest challenge is it between our ears. It's not the situation; is what we're thinking. Amen. 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 I think from I think and what I've experienced and going through a really really rough and tough situation, uh, I stay occupied. I, I you know, I'm occupying myself. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm staying in the Word of God, and I'm not stopping. I'm actually 
going out and sharing and, and witnessing, and I, I'm, I'm keep moving forward. I'm keep doing something. Amen. Say, well, I can't do nothing. Uh, is his strength to go forward? Time he, 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 he encourages us. I to be a witness or I have to minister. I have to be able to to talk to other people about what I'm going through, but encourage other people as well uh, as we go through it. So I think what we could... Uh, yeah, excuse me, I'm sorry. Y'all, y'all, y'all got to work. Praise God. I think I don't want to... Nah, we still hear you. Uh, Yeah, I, I, I'm in listening to that. Uh, um, Brother Austin, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. All right. Uh, I'm here. Would you like to jump in there? And, and Yeah, uh, yeah. I just was trying to, you know, I didn't want to step on anybody, step over anybody. <laughs> they were talking. <laughs> but but um, <clears throat> it's, it's good to hear your voice, brother. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I was going to say, um, just, just listening to... Uh, um just a word going forth and and how do we overcome um the the only way that we can overcome is is that we got to know who we are in in Christ Jesus we got to we got to know that we are more than a conqueror it's like it has to be a knowing and not a feeling because <clears throat> when we deal with feelings our feelings change just like the weather uh, one minute we're happy. One minute, if somebody say something bad to us or out the way, we're in our feelings about something. We're upset about something. Um, if something happens at home or disagreeing with our wives, if we could be upset with something. You know, we could have it could do something to our day. Or if she says something pleasant to us, it could make us happy. Whatever the case might be, we are our feelings change. But if we feel, if we look for a feeling from God, knowing that we are overcomers, then that's not going to work because we got to get beyond the feelings and get to the knowing, knowing who you are, knowing that God has my back, that he will never leave me for or forsake me. And if we can, um, we go to Ephesians chapter one. Um, <clears throat> when um, I'm reading from the amplified uh, version as well, um, but Ephesians chapter one, it also kind of gives you a description of who we are in Christ and what we already have. If you start with verse, um, start with verse, I think this is three. Um, sorry, verse, yeah, verse three, it says blessed and worthy of praise be the God and father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with spirit every spiritual blessings in the heavenly realms in Christ, meaning that we are blessed with spiritual blessings in heavenly realms. We've already been blessed. We don't need to ask God to bless us. It's already been done. And we have heavenly blessings, okay? We have heavenly blessings. We have spiritual blessings in the heavenly realms through Jesus Christ. Um, in verse 4, just as he chose us, in Christ uh, <clears throat> uh, for himself before the foundation of this world so that we would be holy, set apart for him, and blameless in his sight and love. So he said that we have already been chosen before the foundation of the of the world. We've been set apart. We've been set aside. Um, in his sight, we are blameless. And not just are we blameless, but we are blameless in love. That means God saying that he loves us, that he doesn't see any sin or any uh, um, 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 deformities or um, anything less than what love is that he has. He has an unconditional love for us already before the foundation of the world. Verse 5, he predestined 
and lovingly, there go that word love again, lovingly planned for us to be adopted to himself. Means that he has set purpose that he, with love, not obligation, or not because he felt sorry for us, but with love, he has adopted us to himself as children through Jesus Christ. In accordance with the kind intentions and good pleasure of his will. Verse 6, to the praise of his glorious grace and favor, which he he so freely bestowed on us in the beloved, his son, Jesus Christ. In him we have redemption. That is our deliverance and salvation through his blood, which paid the penalty for our sin and resulted in the forgiveness and the complete pardon of our sin in accordance with the riches of his grace, which he lavished on us in all wisdom and understanding with the practical insight. Verse nine, he made known to us the mystery of his will. Okay. Check this out. He, he is showing us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure. So he's revealed to us his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ with regard to the fulfillment of the times that is the end of history, the climax of ages to bring all things together in Christ, things in the heavens and things on the earth. Verse 11, in him also we have received an inheritance. We were claimed by God as his own, having been predestined. Did you hear that? It says that we have, um, we have received an inheritance from him because of our, of our, our belief in Christ. There's nothing that we've done, but because we believe in Christ, we have received an inheritance, uh, um, having been predestined uh, according to the purpose of him, who works everything in agreement with the counsel and design of his will, so that we who were the first to hope in Christ, who first put our confidence in him as our Lord and Savior, would exist to the praise of his glory. Now listen to verse 13. In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the good news of your salvation, and as a result, believed in him, were stamped with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit, the only, the one promised by Christ as owned and protected by God. We were stamped with a seal. When we accepted Christ, we were stamped with a seal. That means that our spirit cannot no longer be separated from the love of God because we were stamped. We are protected. Um, our spirit man has been sealed. Yeah, we maybe go through things emotionally and with our body, but our spirit man is strong. We have the same spirit, like he mentioned in Romans chapter 8, verse 11, we have the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. So we do have power in us, but the thing is it is that some of us don't know who we are. And when we dig into the word, when we run to the word and find out who we are, when we make the word our mirror, that everything we see in the word about us, it is truth. Even though factuality that we are going through something, we could be depressed, we could be um, suffering stress and anxiety, but the truth is that we are more than conqueror because that's what the word says that we are and that God will never leave us nor forsake us and that we have spiritual blessings in heavenly places. That's exactly what the word says. So to overcome that, we got to know to overcome adversity, to overcome depression, to overcome the thoughts of suicide. Yes, I've been there too. I dealt with depression um, uh, on a number of occasions. And the last time I thought I was going to get 
get through depression is when I lost my son and I said, nope, not this time because I know that I'm more than a conqueror. I know that God is with me even through this, that he is with me and that he will never leave me. And once I understood that, it was no longer for me being mad at God. It's just me, God, I need you to heal my hurt. I need you to heal my pain. I need to feel your presence. I know you're here because your word says you're here, but now I just need I just need some reassurance. And he did because he kept my mind sane. And then I got to got to the point where people were coming to me and said, Man, you are a blessing just to see you continue stand even with what you went through. So when you when you have to deal with adversity because it's gonna come, you gotta know. You have to know. I mean you have to know. You have to know that you know. Just the same way that you know that you are a child of God, you got to know, got to know, got to know who you are and what the Word of God says about you. Amen. 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 <clears throat> um, what are some practical steps that, that, that one can take? You know, because, you know, as I said before, you know, the the saying says that you, know, you can't see the forest for the trees. And when you are going through or when the person is going through, um, sometimes it's difficult for them to see past the, their situation, the, you know, their current situation that they're going through. Uh, what are some practical steps that, that one can take um, to, number one, identify uh, that they may be going through? Uh, about a depression or maybe even oppression, um, what are some practical steps that they can, that a person can take? Now, let me preference this by saying I don't think any of us on this call are uh, PhDs or psychologists or anything like that. So, whatever answers we are given, we're given based on the on on the scripture, on the Word of God. Um, so please understand that uh, I, I can tell you for myself, I, I haven't been to anybody's school, I haven't studied psychology, but I know what the Word says. So Amen. I'm, 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 Amen. I'm asking from a position of what do you feel are some practical ways through, through the Word of God or uh, that a person can take to try and overcome uh, or to come out of a, of a bout of depression or maybe even... Uh, some signs of what we have seen or even noticed, or maybe even something that we've gone through where where someone may have, where we may have been able to tell somebody, hey, man, I think I'm struggling in this area. Well, I I, I think, first of all, um, it has to be, it, it has to be a, a decision that that person will have to make that, okay, all right, listen, I'm, you know, I'm feeling this kind of way, and I know that this is not of God. So they got to recognize that. Because a lot of times, and I've done this in the past, so I'm speaking from experience, not from a book aspect or academic aspect, but I'm speaking from experience that when things don't go my way or when I feel when I'm depressed because things are not going away, I blame God. I blame God. I said, you allow this to happen. This is you. This is you. And I forget about the scripture on John chapter 10, verse 10, where it says Satan comes to kill, steal, and destroy, but Jesus comes to bring life in more abundantly. So when I know, when, when you're dealing with depression, you got to know, number one, is an attack on your life. When you, when you, when you accept Christ as your Savior, you have now become wanted by Satan. There's a a wanted poster in hell with your picture on it because he wants you to be so discouraged that you will not trust God. See, what, what, problem, what happens with problems is is that when you focus on a problem, you – you're not focuses on you're not focusing on God, and what Satan wants to do is he wants to keep your mind <laughs> off God. So if you're focused on whatever problem it is, you're not thinking about God, and that's where Satan wants you to be. So you got to recognize number one, okay, I have a problem here. I know this is not of God, 
because especially with financial problems, I know it's not of God because he says to apply all my needs, okay? So I know that that's the word, and that's true. The fact is I'm dealing with this problem, but the truth is that he supply all my needs according to his riches and glory, okay? So that's that's one step. All right, I got to recognize the root of this problem. The root of the problem is Satan. Satan is the root of the problem. Now, okay, so here's a problem. I can't, I have authority over Satan, you know, because of the blood of the lamb that was shed. I have the authority. It's in me, okay? So now what do I do? Now I need to do is I need to tap into God. So you say, well, how does happen in God? I got to get in his word. Okay, you may say, I don't have time to work. I can't understand the word. Okay, well, you make time and stuff for everything else you want to do. So now you got to fight. So now you got to use the word of God to fight this thing. So how you um, how you do that? You start going through the scriptures. You start going through it. You start looking at scriptures. You got to pull up a um, um, if you need to go to um, Blue Letter Bible or whatever, it's putting keywords, stress or anxiety, whatever, and, and over depression, and they will start flowing you with, with scriptures dealing with that. You start meditating on scriptures. You go to YouTube. You go to YouTube, you can pull up healing scriptures or whatever. You can almost pull up everything um, on YouTube and start looking at the scriptures, reading those scriptures, meditating those scriptures, putting them inside of your heart. So you can start getting some revelation knowledge of who God says you are or how to handle your problems. Thirdly, you need to get with some believers, because I'm not saying for you to do this by yourself. You need to get with some some people who are like-minded like you or even better, who have um, a strong faith, and you can say, hey, this is what I'm dealing with. I'm going through. I've been, can you just lease Pray with me on this matter. Can you just, can we talk about this? It may be something that they can share with you that can help you. Um, but those are things that you need to do. But it starts with you recognizing the root. Secondly, secondly, you start doing the, getting to the word and knowing who you are in Christ. And thirdly, get with some people who are like-minded, who's going to encourage you, who's going to lift you up, who's going to build you, who's going to even maybe pray with you um, so you can get through this situation. Sometimes we just need somebody to lift our hands up you know, to, in their, or to, that we can lean on to stand. Sometimes we just need to stand. Just, just we just need to stand. We don't need to 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 run anywhere or go anywhere, but we need to just stand and with and 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 deal with the storm. My hand, the storm never stays at its spot. It leaves. It moves. And in Psalms ninety one, he says, I think towards the end, he says that I'm gonna be with you in trouble. That means you're gonna have trouble. I'm gonna be with you even though you're in trouble. I'm there. Then it says, I will will deliver you from trouble. So I'm going to be with you in trouble. I'm going to deliver you out of trouble. Then all of a sudden it says, after that it says, I will honor you. So after you are in trouble, after he delivers you out of trouble, then he will honor you. He will prepare a table before you in presence of your enemy. Wherever the enemy is, he's going to bless you right in front of that enemy. I don't care what it is, and that's what his word says. But in order for you to obtain that, you got to believe and trust. You can't make nobody trust. They just got to trust. They just got to trust. They, they, you know, you can't make anybody trust. And you think about it, the way our children trust us is because they've known us for a long time, because they know us. They say, I know my dad is going to take care of me, you know, or a, a sibling or a good friend that's known you for a while. I know that my brother has my back. We got to get to the point that as long as we've been walking with God, that we got to know that he has our back. We got to know. We can't feel it because the feeling will mislead you. But Amen. we got to know. That God has a, and that's something that I can't make you do. You got to get to the point where I got to trust, I got to trust God. And this, I got to trust God. 
There's nothing I can do with. Sometimes God will put you in a situation that only person that can help you is him. He says, I'm going a, I'm to a put you in a position where you have to trust me because when you come out like pure gold, you can say that was nobody but God. I know that was God. Amen. Amen. Um, amen. Amen. Um, yes, to, to piggyback on what uh, Brother Elston was just saying, um, you know, um, in Revelations it talks about uh, how we overcome. We yeah. overcome the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. So, again, there, there you go again. You you, you got to say something. Uh, you got to be willing to say something. You got to be willing to share um, your inner problems, or even even where you fall short, you got you, you got to have somebody that you're accountable to, somebody that you can share with, um, so that you don't go through things, um, that you don't feel like you're you're you uh, have to live up to this persona, because I think pride a lot of times has a lot to do with uh, uh, some of our depressions or some of our shortfallings, especially when it comes to areas in our life that we there there may be a deficit in. And 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 that again, there there is a place that Satan play, preys on. He preys on, on fear and, and, and intimidation, you know. Um anytime I can't tell somebody something about me, if I can't tell my wife or if I can't tell, you know, my confidant um what I'm going through, uh there there's a little pride there that I don't want to I don't want to uh uh, fall short of what somebody else is thinking of me, and the reality of it is, it doesn't matter what people think about you. <laughs> the reality, hey, the, here's the truth. You know, they love Jesus. They said Hosanna one day, and the next day they said crucify him. You know, so uh, it, it, people, people are people, man, and and you can't you can't succumb to what others are thinking or what others' uh, uh, per, perception of you is, because if you do. You 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 live by that and you die by that. So mm-hmm. make sure make sure that 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 you're living the way the scriptures that the Colossians everything that we do do it as unto the Lord. You know even even in our workplaces when we have uh, to submit to our bosses in the flesh. You know there there is an order. God put an order in the land that if we live by this order and we speak what God says. Think about this. God created this this whole universe, and in doing so, He created man. He said, "Let let us create man in our image, and in our likeness, after our likeness." Okay, so He created us. Well, when He created us, He put His spirit in us. God is a spirit, therefore we are a spirit. The real you and I, we are spirit. We live in a body, and we have a soul, our intellect. You know, we're free moral agents. We get to make decisions on our own. We can make a decision to live for Christ, or we can make a decision not to live for Christ. Are you with me? <clears throat> so, with that, so if God said something for it to come into existence, guess what I have to do? Now I have to say something. I have to say what God said. So what did Jesus do when Satan came to tempt him? Jesus said what the Word said. That's all he said. He didn't try to fight Satan. He didn't try to go up against Satan. He did right. what the Word said. And the word, Satan said, uh, turn, these, turn these rocks into bread. <laughs> turn these stones into bread. Right. And he said what the Word said. And that's what we have to do. We're going to come up against trials. We're going to come up against temptations. We're going to come up against all sorts of things. Because just as Elson said, Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. In this scripture, in this passage of scriptures in, in 1 Peter, it says, be sober, well-balanced, self-disciplined, be alert and cautious at all times. The enemy of yours, that enemy of yours, that enemy of yours, of the believer, that enemy of yours. It says it right here. That enemy of yours, the devil, prowls around. King James Version says, walks around like a roaring lion and seeking who he can destroy. Again, he comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. One passage of scripture says, 
The word gets sown into your heart, and immediately when it's sown, Satan comes to snatch it away. Well, what is he trying to snatch away from you? Elson pointed to it earlier. Brother Elson pointed to it earlier. Satan, when you born again, become born again, he's not after you, the person. He's after your faith. He's okay. after the word God is going to sow into you because what does he want? What does he not want to happen? Because each one of us is connected to somebody or a group of people. And if I get out and I can start telling somebody else how to get out, now they get free. Satan doesn't want that. So if, if I'm the one, he's got to stop me so that I can't get everybody else that's connected to me out. Amen. Amen. So, stand firm in the word. <clears throat> how do I stand firm in the word? Well, here's how. I go to the scripture. Okay, if the King James doesn't speak to me, I got to find a new version that does. Maybe it's the message. Maybe it's the Amplified. Maybe it's the NIV. Maybe it's the New Living Translation. But I keep going through the translations until the words start jumping off the page at me, and now I can get some understanding. Amen. That's right. Proverbs chapter. Or it says this, it says, round, I believe round about verse 7, it says, wisdom is the principal thing. It's the, main, it's the main thing, wisdom. Therefore, get wisdom. Okay, what am I getting? I'm getting the principal thing, the wisdom. And then it goes on to say, with all of your getting, get understanding. Why do I need, if I, get, if I have wisdom, why do I need understanding? I need to have understanding of how this thing works. Right. Have understanding of it Guess what Satan can come And snatch it away The only thing we get to keep in life Is that which we understand If I don't understand it Somebody can take it away from me If I don't understand money Somebody can take it away from me If I don't understand how to love my wife And how to, how to treat my family Somebody can take it away from me But when I have understanding Through the word of God you can't take that away from me. That's right. Nor can I take it away from anyone else. The word of God is true. Amen. 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 Pray if you're there. I, I, I'd like to. I know we got about uh, about three or four minutes. I'd like to turn it over to you at this time and 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 uh, and allow you to have the final say, sir. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. Listen, um, uh, Brother Tony just, real quick, Brother Tony just uh, sent me a message saying that he was he, sorry that he missed the call, um, and he wants you guys to continue for he's sick with the flu, so that's not he, why that's why he's not with us today, okay, um, and everything. But uh, this has been an awesome, awesome um, um, word, awesome teaching, awesome just to me to and just being transparent is much needed. Um, again. And our word today is much needed among men. Um, I want to um, share, I think Brother Cleopas already know, amen, but I want to share with you uh, a couple of things, and then we're going to close out in prayer, okay? First, uh, uh, one of my favorite scriptures that I know that helped was one of the things that helped me get to the word always will help you do it. It says, finally, brother, whatsoever things that are true, coming out of Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, whatsoever, whatsoever things that are true, whatsoever things that are honest, whatsoever things are just, Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things of a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, thank on these. You know, and um, that was one of the scriptures for me that I had to just keep rehearsing over and over and over again, along with others and stuff. So that was I wanted to say that also. Uh, next month we're going to continue this conversation. And then uh, we do have um, for Brother Tyrone and Brother Elson, we do have a couple of guests that are joining, and they are professionals, but they're Amen. Christian professionals, okay? So they will be able to um, um, give us a little bit more information, and uh, we'll be able to ask some questions, that kind, that kind of stuff. The first person that we have in, amen, her name is LaMonica Williams, okay? And um, she's a psychotherapist, and she owns a business called the Healing and Refuge Center, amen, um, in, in Wichita, Kansas. And uh, I've, I've, been, I've known her for years. Uh, through the years, she's been a guest on the broadcast before, talking about healing and that kind of stuff. So this is what she does. This is her business, okay? There's other guests that we have come on. There's another person I've been knowing for, for, for many, many years. It's Nicole Tosin, okay? Uh, her, back, her, her, her thing is she's a professional counselor, 
okay, and has a master's degree in counseling. This is what she do. She talks to people that are going through, people that are facing depression and everything. And anybody else you guys might have an idea who maybe would be willing to come on and just talk to us and then about these different things because those these things that we talk about, depression and suicide, is extremely for real, man. And it needs to be it needs to be addressed because people are crying out for help, you know. Preachers and pastors and and lay people are crying out for help, man, you know, and everything. And we as Elton used to, what did Elton um, um, Faber said when I was in the same church with him? He said, "I'm my, am I, they well, that is it's actually a scripture says, am I my brother's keeper?" <laughs> you know, Amen. Up, and we are we are each other's keepers, man. You know, I'm responsible for you. And you're responsible for me, you know. We're checking. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm shopping your iron, and you're shopping your iron. And um, one of the things I liked about that period of time, um, Elston, is that the brothers, not all of them, because everybody don't get catch the vision, but they had the responsibility to contact each other on a regular basis and say, "Hey, man, what's up? Are you okay? What's going on with you?" And stuff like that. And we as men don't really do that unless we, we see. Uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna bring it up football or something like that, but we're not gonna talk football. <laughs> yeah, of course you don't want to talk football today. I know you don't. <laughs> I'm not gonna bring it up either. I'm not gonna. I mean, you know, peace be still. Peace be still. I ain't gonna say that, but I, I I noticed that you didn't bring it up at all this whole hour, and you blame it on the mic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I, I knew you were gonna do that. I knew it was gonna be a problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it's okay, man. But uh, for those that are wondering what's going on, since he didn't want to bring it up, but I'll bring. It, I don't have a problem. The Cowboys <laughs> lost today. Okay. Well, no, they did. I didn't know that. <laughs> oh wow! So, so I already hear about, about that. Yeah. Okay. And the right. Redskins won, so you know it's gonna be one of those weeks. It's the next Sunday, you know, so it's okay. I'm 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 okay with that. You mm-hmm. know, I'm not okay with the loss. Cause, but anyway, mm-hmm. all right. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. you know, but anybody, uh, somebody, somebody uh, uh, has sent me a message saying that we that means that we're not as um as good as we thought we were. So I said, yeah, mm-hmm. I guess you're right. I guess you're right. So it's all good. But anyway, um, I want to um, <laughs> thank those that are. <laughs> Why are you laughing, man? I want to thank those that have been listening to the broadcast online. I see the different telephone numbers. And then um, I want to encourage you that when we have these broadcasts, especially with the men, if you press the number one, and then that means you have a question to ask or whatever, we welcome those things, okay? We welcome um, 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 your questions or, or comments or whatever and stuff. So. But uh, we are definitely out of time. It's after 8 o'clock. Amen. Um, what I'm going to do is um, <laughs> I'm going to ask Brother Elsie to close this out of prayer. <laughs> you probably think I'm doing it for a particular reason, right? But mm, I'm, it's cool. Uh, I, I'm cool. I can handle it. It's cool. <laughs> mm-hmm. But before we close out, before he closes out of prayer, I want to give um, 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 Brother Cleo for the last thing. Anything else you want to add? Uh, say because, and I, I thank you, my brother, because I, I couldn't do. I was trying to balance out the, the studio and trying to uh, uh, be part of it too. But you did an excellent job. Yeah, amen. Thank you, thank you, thank amen, you, amen. thank you. All y'all brothers did that too. You know, thanks. It's a uh, my applause. There we go. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, well, so I'll, uh, say I'll say right. this, and then I'll I'll be very extremely brief, but. Listen, if if you're going through any challenge in your life, um, you're struggling in any area in your life, you don't don't keep it locked in. Uh, you don't worry about what people think about you. Don't worry about, you know, the Bible says don't worry about anything. Uh, bring our, bring our, all your petitions before the Lord, and, and cast all your cares. Um, don't be concerned with what people think because people don't have a hell to put you in, nor do, nor can they put you in heaven. Um, so. You know, be cognizant of that, and 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 if you want help, get help. You know, this mm-hmm. is just a format and, and a platform for us to to bring something up and discuss something that could be affecting ourselves, our family, and and and, and anyone out there. 
And, you know, it, it, the, only re the reason we're talking about this, and not the only reason, but the main reason we're talking about this is because the Spirit of the Living God laid it on my heart. I shared it with Reverend Ray, whom the Spirit of God had laid on his heart. And the Bible says, in the mouth of the two or three witnesses, <laughs> let it be established. So here we are, we're talking about something that I think can help all of us um, that are listening, and, and the, more importantly, it can help us that are, that are, that are speaking about it. Uh, because we go through challenges in, in life, and and just know that you're not, you're never in it by yourself. Whether you have somebody physically there with you or not, God is with you. Uh, his word says that He will never leave you nor forsake you. I don't care what it looks like, He's with you. Amen. 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 Want me to go ahead and pray now, Ray? Yes sir. yes, sir. Okay. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this time. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the word that went forth this past hour. God, I pray, God, for those right now who are listening, who are dealing with depression, anxiety, who are who are fighting um, a, a warfare in their mind. And I just, I just, first of all, ask for peace, and I take authority over the enemy now. I tell him to leave. He has no authority. He has no right. I cast all those cares that they may have. I cast it to cast it over to you, Father. Then I ask, Father, that you will just um, um, encourage them somehow, Father. Somehow that you will send labors to them, Father. You send a word of wisdom, word of knowledge to them, Father. Something, God, that will. Get them to, to turn to you, Father. I pray right now in Jesus' name for wellness and wholeness and life in their situation. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Wholeness and wellness. And even somebody's depressed because of financing. If it's a financial burden, Father, I pray, Heavenly Father, that their needs will be met, like you said in your word. If it's healing they need, that they stand in the word, that with the stripes, that they are already healed in First Peter chapter 2, verse 24. I pray and declare healing, command healing for them from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet. And I speak of life to their bodies now in Jesus' name. God, we even thank you for the praise report for Tyrone. His daughter's coming home tomorrow. We thank you, God. Yes, you, Father, for just that that blessing, God, right then and there that she is coming. She's getting better, Father, that she is making a recovery Father, in the name of Christ Jesus, God. We thank you, Father. We praise you, and we honor you. And it's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. 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 And amen. Again, I want to thank everyone for joining us today on our three real life, real men, real talk with my brothers here, the my, my mighty, mighty, the mighty men, amen, talking about the, the things in there. Amen. I also want to encourage you, real quick, also, that if you are uh, thinking about suicide or you're going through anything like that, you can call 1 800 uh, Suicide Prevention Line uh, or 1 800 273 Talk or 1 800 8255. Amen. Please. Uh, don't try to go back, call a loved one, call or dial 911. Don't try to go through this by yourself. Know that there are people that are praying for you, that have their best interest. Know that God wants you to live and not die, and do not, and not to hurt other people. Okay, uh, real quick. Also, uh, his surviving grace for Minister Vanessa Williams is every Tuesday, and then um, every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Okay. Uh, okay. The weekly broadcast, uh, declare the finished work, Reverend Pat Randall, Thursday at 12 noon. Amen. Um, the, um, Friday Night Joy is at 7 p.m. on Friday. Bread of Life is the first and the second, first and the fourth Sunday at 7 p.m. Challenge to Change with Pastor Paul Morgan is Wednesday at 7 p.m. The monthly broadcast are follows. Lifeline and Apostle Shirley Jones is every first Monday at 7 p.m. The Bowling and Beautiful with Reverend Novino Reed, Reverend Curtis Austin, Minister Jordana Cunningham is every second Saturday at 10 a.m. Adoration with Evangelist Lewis McElwain is every third Monday of the month. 
Amen. At 7 p.m. Marriage Takeover with the Body of One and Reverend Eric and Reverend Tamika Thompson is every third Sunday at 7 p.m. In fact, it's next Sunday coming up next Sunday. Hour three, Real Life, Real Men, Real Talk, which you just did with uh, myself, Elston Green, Clear Fuss Malone, Tyrone Rose, and Antonio Mitchell every second Sunday. And also, we do a weekly prayer called Midday Glory Prayer with Reverend Gwen Dixon every Wednesday. Amen. At 1 p.m. It's a free conference call number. The number is 712-770-5506. And access code is 732-499. Please feel free to check us out on Facebook or request to speak. Amen. And also our website is onechristianspeak.com. We pray that you have a blessed rest of the afternoon. God bless you. Thank you, brothers. Uh, thank you, brothers. God bless all of you. God bless you. Amen. God bless. God bless, brothers.